Uh, that brings me on to the next uh, speaker, and I'm, I'm very happy to introduce one of my colleagues, uh, Soraya Nutu, who is a uh, clinical nurse specialist in inherited cardiac conditions at Guy's and St Thomas's. She has a, a wealth of experience uh, and uh, in our service uh, leads on uh, counselling for ICD patients with uh, inherited cardiac conditions. Uh, so I'll pass over to you, Soraya. I'm not sure if you're on mute, Soraya. Sorry, I, I was. Um, hi, Liam. Hi, Chris. Um, thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you for the, um, for the um, invitation to talk. Let me just share my desktop. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Oh, it's coming up. Yeah, we can see it. Excellent, thank you. So basically today my uh, my talk is on counselling a patient for an ICD implantation. Sorry, sorry I just let you know, it's not in presentation mode just yet. We can see the screen and all the slides. But that might, that might still work for you. Sorry, I'm not too sure what's happening here. I think in the bottom right hand corner, you've got your slideshow uh, icon next to the, the magnifying glass, uh, magnifying uh, scale. On the left hand side, you should have your slideshow icon. That's the one. If not, you should be able to still out there. Per Can you see this? Perfect. Thank you very much, Joanne. Oh, that's, that's not great, is it? We can see it. We can see it nice and clear. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so sorry. Yes. So the talk is on counselling a patient for uh, counselling a patient for ICD implantation, and um, okay. The aim of ICD counselling is to allow patient to address concerns that they may have, and also attempt to minimise negative psychological or psychosocial impacts such as fear, depression and anxiety. Uh, during counselling session, a lot of patients you know, repeatedly would repeat that they are worried about their ICD firing. Um, and uh, during my counselling session, um, I, the main points that I cover are uh, what does an ICD do, the procedure, wound care, follow up, living with an ICD and I've got two case studies that I would like to share with the audience. And so an ICD, which we also refer to as a battery device or pulse generator. And, um, and if the primary, I would explain to my patient that the primary purpose of an ICD is to treat ventricular arrhythmias such as VT and VF. I would also explain to them that the main advantage of a defibrillator is that if patients are to suffer a life-threatening rhythm, the defibrillator is the best treatment we have and would successfully terminate the abnormal rhythm either by rapid pacing, which is painless, or possibly by delivering an electric shock. Um, I will also inform them that the ICD can record heart's activity and is stored by the device. Um, information can be retrieved during follow-up visits. Um, however, the ICD does not record um, all of the heartbeats as that would drain the battery, but is programmed to record certain types of episodes uh, based on medical condition. Um, I also um, tell them that the, um, in addition to treating dangerous life-threatening rhythm, most ICDs also have the ability um, to function as a standard cardiac pacemaker and treat slow heart rhythm. However, standard pacemakers do not perform the key function of an ICD, which is to deliver a shock. Um, I sometimes, depending on the patient's um, underlying disease, sometimes I do discuss combination therapy, which would be ICD with um, antiarrhythmic drugs and sometimes with VT ablation. 
which they need in conjunction with um, ICD. Um, I do go in a quite an in-depth and explicit um, explanation about the procedure. Um, I explain to patients that ICDs are implanted in front of their chest, below the collarbone, um, under the skin, normally on the non-dominant arm, with two wires or leads being placed in their hearts, uh, which are connected to the defibrillator. Um, and the procedure would either be carried out as a day case or as an overnight stay. And procedure is usually done under sedation and local anesthetic, and in some patients it's done under GA. The procedure lasts for about 60 to 90 minutes, and a chest X-ray is done um, post-procedure to make sure that the leads are in proper position. Um, I would give some wound care advice post procedure implantation. So uh, they can resume to normal activities within three to four days, um, but they will have some limits for up to, to four to six weeks. Uh, patients are, are not to raise their arm above their head. No lifting, pushing, pulling or twisting too much. They are also, you, they are to keep the incision completely dry for about 45 days. And then after that, they can have showers, but they need to pat it, uh, to pat the wound dry after. And I would always advise them to wash their hands before they touch the wound. And obviously, um, pain is also a big issue and, you know, just ask them to take some regular painkillers. Um, but if the pain persists, then they are to to um, consult their GP. Um, again, follow up post discharge um, an, identi an ICD identification card is given to patients and they are to keep um, the card on them at all times. They will have their first follow up um, appointment in the pacing clinic in about four to six weeks. Then they will have it every, every six months um, in the department to monitor the effective uh, functioning of the device. Uh, I do mention to them the ICD batteries last for about seven to ten years and when the battery is drained they will have a minor procedure to, re to replace the pulse generator. They are also, patients are also discharged with a home, uh, remote home monitoring and um, which which will send information at schedule intervals or if there is any arrhythmia occurs, the home, monitor, the home monitoring device will pick it up. Um, and also we go around um, discussing living with an ICD. Um, so we, I mentioned monitoring, um, which I have covered, but the monitoring is, is done throughout their lifetime. And also I've covered battery life, which is about seven to eight, ten, ten, ten years. And also we go in a very elaborate conversation about appropriate and inappropriate shocking. So an app, I will explain to them that an appropriate shock is when they actually go into a life threatening rhythm, VT or VF, the ICD will de deliver a shock. And uh, most of the time um, a shock for when, when patients receive a shock, they would normally lose consciousness. And also, I we talk about um, inappropriate shock that can occur if there is a lead failure or malfunctioning or functions. And uh, I will explain to them that either way, whenever they receive a shock, they will have to contact the pacing clinic if it's Monday to Friday or if it's during the weekend, they will have to go to their local a and &E. um, There is a lot of fear around ICD, especially for those who have experienced shocks. Um, they feel very anxious or depressed because they fear that the ICD will, will shock or they might have a device failure. Um, and especially that there is no warning when they get a, that they get, um, um, a shock. Um, and there's also driving restrictions, which a lot, which is very, very important for some patients. Um, 
Patients who require ICD for primary prevention are allowed to drive for about a month post-procedure. And if they receive any therapy from the ICD, they are banned to drive for about at least three to six months. And for those who require an ICD for secondary prevention, they cannot drive for about six months at least. And for all commercial drivers, their license are revoked. Um, and patients are to avoid all electromagnetic um, interference um, from external source. They are allowed to use mobile phones and any household appliances such as microwave, TV, an electric hob, kettles, um, toasters, anything they can use. And I would advise them not to keep their mobile um, if they're wearing a jacket, not to keep it on the top pocket, but to keep it below the waist. Um, security, security system, um, exposure to security, exposure to um, electromagnetic security system can cause interference. Uh, we advise patient to move through them at a normal pace and avoid standing too close. Um, but at the at the airport, we advise patient to show their identification card and as and probably need a handheld check rather than walking through the security banner as a grill al alarm and might cause interference to the ICT. And uh, during medical tests or procedures, obviously patients will have to inform um, their doctors, their physicians that they have an ICD implanted and um, they can have x-rays done, they can have CT done, but um, we avoid to give them an MRIs. However, um, all our, I, all our um, ICD are MRI compatible and they pose low risk. And also to young women, we would, young women who have an ICD place are generally, generally able to become pregnant and carry the pregnancy to term without any increased risk of shock or harm for the, to the fetus. However, they need to discuss their, um, their risk with their cardiologist. And also I mentioned end of life. If a person with an ICD is near death, um, he or she may, may choose to have the ICD turn off and this decision should be made with families in advance. Um, there are two case studies. I've spoken to two different ladies last last week. Um, one of them, a 59 year old lady diagnosed with ARVC. She was a high risk patient and was given the transvenous ICD at her local hospital. No ICD counselling was given pre procedure, and she was having um, she got an inappropriate shock during a facial. It was not one of those um, traditional facials. She had one of those sophisticated uh, facial and she was attached to a high frequency machine and she received a shock. And after that, she received another shock because um, her, her, her device was alarming. And um, presently, the device at the moment, the device is currently it's turned off and she's being she used to be considered for an SICD. And the patient said to me that she is now suffering from a post traumatic stress disorder and she's very she's She's very concerned about having an ICD and she wished she had some, uh, some, some patients she can speak to. And I've referred her to some websites she can go where, where she can get, find some support group. So that's one patient who's got some post-traumatic stress disorder because of inappropriate shock. She also said to me that if it was an appropriate shock, she would understand that her condition has given her that, you know, VT or VF. But because the, it was an inappropriate shock, is causing her a lot of distress. And I've got another lady, a 16 year old lady with DCM who had uh, some VT, episode, VT episodes and she was given an ICD. I gave her ICD counseling. Unfortunately, um, she had a failed transvenous device because um, she had some problem with her superior vena cavae. Um, but during the ven venogram, she received a shock um, from an external defibrillator that was attached and they were testing it. And she had an SICD um, 
at a later stage. I spoke to her last week and she's she's going through a lot, a lot of fear. She's worried that the device will fire and she's quite a petite lady and she said to me that you can see the device is poking out and she's worried about sleeping. She hasn't slept for weeks and she doesn't know who to speak to. Um, and I have agreed that I'm going to speak to her again end of May to see how she's how she's coping and then if she needs to be referred to a psychologist and I will get the GP to do that. Uh, there are two different cases and the first lady said to me that she would like to speak to someone and I've spoken to the second lady and I've put them in touch so that they can discuss and I have no idea what's happened but I will I will touch base with them by the end of May and see how they are going, how they are getting on. And uh, prior to uh, counselling, I send them links or sometimes I send the booklet so that they can have a read before the counselling session. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Good. Uh, summary of the uh, importance of ICD counselling. I think it's, it's, it's so important uh, when patients are having a device to have this chat before, but it's also not just a, a one-off chat, it's a, it's a continual chat that, like you said, you had some patients who've already got devices who they uh, have further questions, so it's, a, so it's an important skill to continue to be able to counsel them through uh, through the whole uh, journey. Um, so I hope you're able to join us for the panel discussion uh, at the end. In the interest of, of time, we're going to move on to the next session and ask some of the questions of the panel discussion at the end, if that's OK. Absolutely. Um,